1971, a guy named Daniel Ellsberg leaked what would become known as the Pentagon Papers. Papers that exposed just how bad America's military action in Vietnam was. The Pentagon Papers were a revelation. It exposed that the government, quote, systematically lied, not only to the public, but also to Congress, end quote. And President Nixon was not happy about the leak. This is a devastating uh, security breach. Of you mean that, that was leaked out of the Pentagon? Well, I uh, Now, I, I just start right at the top and fire some people. I mean, whoever, whatever department it came out of, I'd fire the top guy. The guy that leaked it, Daniel Ellsberg, had to be destroyed. And I'm not kidding. Nixon literally told his aides that they needed to, quote, destroy that son of a b And I don't care how you do it. Quote, you can't let the Jews steal that stuff and get away with it, end quote. We've got to keep our eye on the main ball. The main ball's Ellsberg. we got to get this son of a So Daniel Ellsberg was charged with conspiracy, espionage, and theft of government property, with a possible sentence of 115 years. But it didn't stop there. Next up, Nixon approved the creation of a special investigations unit nicknamed the Plumbers. The job of the Plumbers? To fix leaks, of course. So ex-CIA and FBI agents broke into Ellsberg's psychiatrist's office to look for damning information they could use to assassinate his character. They found nothing. They then proceeded to wiretap him without a warrant, and the CIA conducted psychological profiles on him. You were concerned because the action was known to you to be illegal. It was only after the Watergate scandal and the investigation that followed that prosecutors discovered this illegal campaign against the leaker and the charges were dropped. But the lesson from this was clear. Expose the dirty actions of the government and they will stop at nothing to ruin your life. 38 years later, one man would choose not to pay attention to this lesson. This man would become inspired by Daniel Ilsberg and his leaking of the Pentagon Papers. And this man went by the name of Julian Assange. In 2006, Julian Assange would pick up the mantle Daniel Ellsberg left behind and create WikiLeaks. And for the past 10 years, the US government has been trying their damnedest to get their hands on Assange to teach him that same lesson, but to no avail. But it looks like their opportunity has finally come. Let me bring you some breaking news. A London court has ruled that WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange can be extradited to the United States. Julian Assange is probably going to get extradited to the US this year to stand trial for espionage. And if he does, he is as good as dead. Either from dying in prison, or by meeting the same fate met by others who had too much dirt on those in power. My name is Jake Tran. I make documentaries on money, power, war, and crime with my team. Subscribe for more. If you want to win $1,000 cash, we're picking a random person who follows me on Instagram every week to win. All you have to do is follow me at Jake Tran and you're automatically entered. Watch out for fake accounts. I will never message you asking for money. And this is the execution of Julian Assange. Julian Assange had to take his online security extremely seriously for obvious reasons. But contrary to popular belief, online security is not just for at-risk people like Assange. The internet pervades every aspect of our lives. And if you get compromised online, you could get your identity stolen like someone does every 14 seconds. They could ruin your credit score. You could get your money stolen, your crypto stolen. Your Instagram could be hacked, like I'm sure has happened to some of you guys or your friends. You could set back your life by years all because of a simple cybercrime. And guess what? All of these cybercrimes are just getting more and more popular. So it's not a matter of if you'll be a victim, but when. The problem is, protecting yourself online used to mean paying for a ton of different apps like a VPN, identity theft protection, a password manager, fraud monitoring, antivirus software, and all of a sudden, you're paying like $50 a month for all these different services, which not many people can afford. If only there was an app that combined all these important services into an all-in-one affordable app. Well, you're in luck because that's where Aura comes in, today's video sponsor. What's really cool and scary is that right when I signed up for Aura, I discovered that my information was leaked on the dark web six different times. So I think this feature alone is definitely worth signing up for their 14 day free trial just to make sure you don't have any sensitive data like that floating around on the dark web. But there's a lot more. You can then use Aura to monitor your bank accounts for suspicious transactions. You can monitor and lock your credit score right within the app. 
Locking your credit score is usually a very tedious thing to do, but this makes it super easy, which I really like. You can download their antivirus software to run scans on your computer every day automatically, which is what I do. And whenever Aura detects something suspicious like a virus on your computer, they'll send you a text right to your phone. They have 24 seven customer support every single day of the year. And they even offer a 60 day money back guarantee. And right now, if you go to aura.com slash Jake with the link below, you'll get two weeks of Aura for free. So pause the video and go to aura.com slash Jake with the link below to get two weeks free. And thanks to Aura for sponsoring this video. For the past 10 years, Assange has been running, hiding, and fighting for his life, all because he published secret government information on a public website. But the strange thing is, he didn't leak the information himself. He didn't hack into any computers himself. All he did was publish hidden information given to him by somebody else, something that journalists do every single day. And yet, the US government wants him to spend the rest of his life in jail, or even worse. Assange wanted to build a website where people could anonymously send their leaks and be sure they were quickly going to be made public. Basically, WikiLeaks was going to be a tip line for any secrets people believe the public should know. You could send in your information, the raw data, pictures, and documents you wanted to leak. Assange and his team would then analyze it. And if they thought it was important enough for the public to see, they would send it on to newspapers, online journals, and they would sometimes post it themselves. At least, that was the plan. In Assange's mind, there was no way he could get into trouble for doing this. Thousands of journalists around the world published secret information they got from their sources every day. Why would WikiLeaks be treated any differently? And for the first four years of its existence, Assange was kinda right. WikiLeaks published information from all over the world. Documents proving a former Kenyan president was corrupt, alleged criminal activity by a Swiss bank in the Cayman Islands. They even went up against Scientology. But none of these leaks really got them on the radar. They were interesting, sure, but they weren't targeting powerful enough people. But in 2010, that all changed. US Army intelligence analyst Chelsea Manning sent WikiLeaks nearly half a million documents she downloaded from the Army databases. Much like the Pentagon Papers of the Vietnam War, these documents revealed the reality of the war in Iraq, and it was much worse. How Iraqi soldiers were executing and torturing entire families while the Americans did nothing to stop them. How a US Apache helicopter gunned down enemy soldiers who were surrendering. And how the number of civilians killed in Iraq was actually 60,000 people, far higher than the US wanted to admit. Julian Assange had made the same fatal mistake Daniel Ellsberg of the Pentagon Papers made decades ago, and now he was going to pay the price. How dare Assange, an Australian, publish information that makes America look bad? That was the general consensus from the Obama administration. The United States strongly condemns the illegal disclosure of classified information. It puts people's lives in danger, threatens our national security, and undermines our efforts to work with other countries to solve shared problems. Assange had made his first real enemy. But soon, he was going to have a whole lot more to deal with. We publish CIA reports all the time that are legitimate CIA reports. That doesn't mean the CIA is telling the truth. Yeah. This morning, after nearly seven years inside the Ecuadorian embassy, Mr. Assange was arrested for failing to surrender in relation to his extradition proceedings. Pray Julian Assange! Pray Julian Assange! Pray Julian Assange! In 2010, Julian Assange is accused of raping a woman in Sweden. Even though he hasn't officially been charged by Sweden, he's arrested by UK police. In Assange's mind, it was obvious who was behind this. America. They want him to travel to Sweden so they can extradite him to America. So as soon as the order is given for his extradition to Sweden, he runs. He flees to the Ecuadorian embassy in London, where the ambassador grants him asylum. And that's where things start to go downhill for Assange. He literally lives in a tiny apartment in the middle of the embassy. He has a bedroom, a little kitchen, and he even teaches himself to skateboard, as he spends the next seven years of his life in this tiny apartment to avoid arrest. But even this couldn't stop him from publishing even more leaks. From 2012 to 2019, Julian Assange manages to anger every major political party in America, as well as the embassy he was staying at. 
He publishes Democratic National Committee emails he got from a Russian agent. He posts a leak of the CIA's entire collection of super-secret hacking tools, annoying Donald Trump enough to lie and say he knows nothing about WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks! I love WikiLeaks! These WikiLeaks! WikiLeaks! WikiLeaks as confirmed just today by WikiLeaks! It's been amazing what's coming out on WikiLeaks. They want to distract us from WikiLeaks. The wonder of WikiLeaks. Boy, that WikiLeaks has done a job on her, hasn't it? Uh, I know nothing about WikiLeaks. And then, he takes on the new Ecuadorian president. And that was really the last straw. You see, the new president of Ecuador had actually been the target of some of WikiLeaks' posts. And he was not exactly happy keeping Assange safe from America's wrath. So the Ecuadorians decide it's time to cut him loose. On April 11th, 2019, the embassy invites the UK police inside to arrest Julian Assange. Jailed in Belmarsh prison for skipping bail and waiting for the US to request his extradition, Assange was now facing the fight of his life. While he was in the embassy, the US had secretly indicted him on 18 charges. If they managed to get this extradition approved, his life would be over. So he did everything he could possibly think of to avoid extradition. He appealed over and over again. He married the mother of his children who was a UK citizen while still in jail hoping that would give the judge a reason to keep him in England. He even pointed out how the Swedish rape accusations against him had been dropped. There was no reason for the UK to keep him in prison. America had used its influence to stack all the cards against him. And in April 2022, after spending more than two years in jail, Julian Assange was approved to be extradited to America. Julian Assange is now staring death in the face for doing something every major news organization in the world does every single day. In 2018, a year before Assange is arrested in London, the US Justice Department filed secret criminal charges against him for his role in WikiLeaks. So, when Assange was arrested a year later, he wasn't just facing bail-skipping charges. Oh no, he was facing the full wrath of the American government. You see, in America's eyes, Assange hadn't just done what any good journalist would do and publish leaks. No, he had asked for the leaks, and he had used them to embarrass America, to share its secrets with the world, and make its intelligence agencies look totally incompetent. This wasn't America going after a criminal. This time, it was personal. But what exactly was in the 18-charge indictment filed against Assange? The first charge is probably the least of Assange's problems. It basically accuses Assange of conspiring to commit computer intrusion, which means the US has proof Assange planned on hacking into one of their networks. Luckily for Assange, he never actually did any hacking, so his maximum sentence for the charge would be five years. But that's where the minor charges end. You see, all 17 of the other charges against Assange are based on the Espionage Act. The Espionage Act was created in 1917, during World War I, and basically, it was supposed to punish anyone in the military with access to important or secret information from sharing it with the enemy. Chelsea Manning was charged according to the Espionage Act because she had been a member of the military and leaked the documents herself. That made sense. But according to the American government, by publishing and aiding people to leak government secrets to the public, Julian Assange was violating the Espionage Act too. But here's the thing. Assange isn't a soldier or an intelligence officer. He doesn't have any security clearance. He's not even American. So how does any of this apply to him? And that's after ignoring the elephant in the room. The fact that Assange never actually leaked or stole any information himself. If Assange is extradited to the US, he could face 10 years in jail for every charge of violating the Espionage Act. That's 170 years, excluding the sentence he could receive for the attempted hacking charge. Chelsea Manning, the army analyst who stole and leaked nearly 750,000 secret army documents, was sentenced to 35 years in jail. After almost seven years in prison, her sentence was commuted and she was released. How could a member of the army who admitted to stealing hundreds of thousands of documents get 35 years in jail, while the guy who published those leaks, just published them, could be facing certain death? And what about all the newspapers and magazines that wrote stories on those leaks? Would they be facing criminal charges too?
Today, Assange isn't the young, fired-up activist he once was before. After seven years locked in a tiny room, seven years of doing everything he can to avoid arrest, seven years of always looking over his shoulder, Assange's mental health has taken a turn for the worse. For the longest time, Assange didn't even know what the charges against him would be. For all he knew, he could be faced with a death sentence. And that sort of pressure takes a toll on you. And then, going from the isolation of the embassy to the cold, unfriendly environment of a maximum security prison just made everything worse. In May 2019, doctors who assessed Assange said he showed clear signs of psychological torture. Mr. Assange showed all the symptoms that are typical for persons that have been exposed to prolonged psychological torture. In other words, Julian Assange had reached his breaking point. If the extradition goes ahead and Assange gets taken to America to stand trial, one of three things will probably happen. Faced with all the trauma of the past 10 years and the prospect of spending the rest of his life in jail, Julian Assange might kill himself. Or, like our guy Efri Jepstein, Assange might be the victim of a quote-unquote assisted suicide, the standard punishment for having too much dirt on powerful people. And if Assange doesn't kill himself or get killed within the first few months, he'll spend the last years of his life rotting in a Guantanamo-style maximum security prison. No matter which path he takes, extraditing Julian Assange to America is as good as a death sentence. From there, the Espionage Act would reach its final form, the ultimate open-ended act that would allow the U.S. government to silence any journalist. Around the same time America was dealing with the fallout from the Manning leaks, they had also found a stash of secret information themselves. May 2nd, 2011, SEAL Team 6 successfully locates and kills Osama bin Laden, the most wanted terrorist in the world. But as soon as the team goes through his compound in Pakistan, they discover something unexpected. A treasure trove of computers, hard drives, nooks, letters, notebooks, and printed files lying around on every floor. These files could contain priceless intelligence. And if they left it for the Pakistani military to collect, they may never get their hands on it again. So under the cover of darkness, the SEALs radio back to their commanders, asking for time. They're given 10 more minutes in hostile territory. Those 10 minutes turn into 18, and as a result, SEAL Team 6 brings home nearly 500,000 physical and digital files now known as the Bin Laden Papers. For years, most of those documents were kept classified, hidden from the public. But in 2017, the CIA finally declassified 470,000, and what they contained was a complete revelation. These files showed a whole new side of Osama Bin Laden that the world had never seen before. But here's the thing, YouTube is smart and runs image recognition algorithms over every video posted to look for things that aren't ad-friendly. And videos and images of Bin Laden and 9-11 definitely trigger it right away. So this video would get demonetized instantly, which is why we just released it as a brand new private documentary available only to members of this channel. The video goes over every detail of the Bin Laden papers and all of their infamy. And channel members have been loving this documentary. All you have to do to get access to this documentary right now, and all the other documentary length videos that are too controversial, too dark, too risky to post publicly, is to click the join button below. Once you sign up, you'll get exclusive access to the Bin Laden papers, plus others like Efri Epstein, Monsanto, the company that owns the world's food supply, MKUltra, and many more in the future. These are the things they should be teaching you in university about how the world works. But unlike university, you get all of this for just $5 a month. And what's even better is that if you join and you don't think it's worth it, email me and we'll personally refund you the money. Pause the video and click that join button below right now. This is a story that we're going to be following really closely. So if there are any major developments, we'll probably make another video on it. So if you're new here, my name is Shake, and this is one of the biggest channels for documentaries on money, power, war, and crime. And we make multiple videos just like this every single week for free. So click that subscribe button below. Don't forget to get that two week free trial of Aura with the link below. It's a great app that I like using. And if you want a chance to win $1,000, follow me on Instagram at Jake Tran. Watch out for fake accounts. That's going to wrap it up. Stay dangerous out there. And I will see you guys in the next one.